All right. Tonight I want to talk to you just a little bit. I was driving down the road this week, as I do every week. I spend a lot of time in the truck uh, going from job to job. And, and um, you know, I was praying. And I kind of shared with you a little bit this morning about what God or the Holy Spirit spoke to me today. Um, again, I was driving down the road this week just kind of griping and complaining a little bit about what's been going on in my life. And, you know, just, God, you know, I just I need a break. How many of you ever felt that way? You know, you're going through so many different things. So many things have been put on you. You're going, sometimes I just need a break. God, if you just give me this week. I'm not asking for the month. I'm not asking for anything else. Just give me a week just of stress-free living, uh, everything going right. You know, have you ever prayed one of those prayers? You know, I just need a week that just goes right. I was driving down the road, and I was griping and complaining, like I said this morning, and and, God, and the Holy Spirit just spoke to me and said, just shut up, Jamie. Be quiet. If you spend more time talking to me instead of talking to yourself, we could probably get this thing worked out. And so I learned a valuable lesson this week because, you know, we're surrounded by so many things. And so many things weigh you down. If you're like me, you get caught up sometimes in the cares of the world. And tonight I want to talk to you about there's no darkness in the light. There's no darkness in the light. But we have to be aware of the darkness. You know, sometimes we get caught up in our own little cocoon here at church, and we think well, everything's just all spiritual, and we walk around with our head up in the clouds, and then we fail to realize there's a world out there full of darkness. And, uh, but we have to be aware of the darkness. It took me back to a story um, that uh, I want to tell you. Uh, Again, this is not my first time to be youth pastor here at the church. Uh, I think I'm going on year number, what, three? Now, the second go around. But I, uh, when I was a younger man, I had the opportunity to be youth pastor here before. Uh, and uh, we used to do a lot of lock-in, stuff like that. And, and we had, uh, matter of fact, I, <laughs> what you, you pointed Alicia for? She was one, I think she was one of my youth, the first to go around. I'm going to tell you how old I am. Um, but we used to have a lot of lock-ins up here, things for the kids. One of our favorite things to do was play hide-and-go-seek. We love to play hide-and-go-seek up here at the church. And if you look around, this is a humongous place. It's a big place, and there are plenty of places to hide. And so we thought of this game, and, or I actually thought it up, and basically we'd have a group that'd go out and hide, and and uh, everybody had to make it back to the gym before the other, everybody got tagged. And it was fun. Every time we'd get together, kids, let's play hide and go seek. Let's play hide and go seek. One night we were up here playing. And have you ever been up here at night, anybody? Anybody been up here at night when the lights are off? <laughs> when the egg gets dark and everything in this place creaks and cracks. And, I mean, I was in here the other night by myself. And I couldn't get out of here fast enough. Because, I mean, it's just like almost, you know, it's like somebody's playing around. And I'm like, what in the world's going on? You know, somebody's in, somebody has to be in here, you know. Well, we get up here and we're playing and we're playing hide and go seek. And, uh, you know, I have some youth sponsors, some people that help. Uh, Ray and Lisa always come up here and help. And which brings me to my story. We were playing hide and go seek one night and kids were running around and we were having a good time. All of a sudden, I think I'm back in the gym. Ray's hurt. Ray's hurt. And so we find Ray. <laughs> and bless his heart, he gets out here and he plays with the kids. And, you know, we always try to hang out with them when they're running around. And we don't think that that darkness exists. And sometimes that's the most dangerous place to be. Because we get in here. And, again, like I said, sometimes we get in here and we walk with our head up in the clouds. We don't see that darkness. And when we walk out those doors and it hits us right upside the head, it takes us by surprise and it lays us flat on our back. And then we go, what do we do from here? What do we do from here? See, we come in here and we have our church experience. But as I've said many a times, it has to get a little bit further than just on the outside. We've got to get it on the inside. And let me tell you something. What I've been seeing here going on here lately, it's getting on the inside of a lot of people. And it seems like, you know, as a church body, you know, sometimes I tell, I tell Kim all the time, I said, I hate learning the same lessons over and over again. 
You know, sometimes we have to go through that point. Have you ever just had to learn that same lesson just over and over again? You know, sometimes it finally clicks. But that darkness exists all around us, and we must be aware of the danger. You know, we're getting so, told so many lies. We've been manipulated by our media, by the, what, the way the world is and what the world is trying to tell us. It's lying to us. It's manipulating us. And it's spreading all kinds of confusion all over the world. Telling us all these things that we can believe that we shouldn't believe. And Pastor even said it this morning. I never thought I would live to see the day that our own nation would try to pass the law to ban the Bible. I never thought I'd see the day when churches and Christian business people could be sued by living what they believe. I thought I lived in a country of freedom of religion. That I was free to practice what I read in this book. But we don't live in that country anymore. Everybody is free to have an opinion in this country except Christians. Everybody can have a viewpoint and we can plaster it all over TV and we can make laws about it that says that we have to agree with that viewpoint. But when we pull out our Bibles and say God doesn't agree with that viewpoint, then we're the ones that are wrong. We're the ones that are the haters. We're the ones that are the bigots. Why? Because there's darkness all around. There's darkness all around. I never thought in a million years that I would see schools allow your kids to opt out of sex education. How many of you know when you was in school you had to send that note home with your parents or your, to your parents to say if you could sit through the class or not? But you can still opt out of that. But you know what? I was listening to AFR this week. You cannot opt out of sexual orientation in school anymore, in the public school system. They do not give you the option to opt out of that. If they offer that in the school, it's required. And you can't opt out. You can't give a kid in school an ibuprofen without his parents' permission yet you can point a young lady to the nearest abortion clinic without ever notifying her parents through our school systems. We live in a world full of darkness. I remember Connor, he was a young man. We get a call from the school one day. Connor's always been one of those young men who loved to help people. I had given him some ibuprofen because he, at that time, would sometimes experience some bad headaches. And he was at school, and one of his friends had a bad headache, and so he realized, remember that Dad had gave him some, and he pulled it out of his pocket and gave it to his friend, and he got expelled. You know, it just floors me. How we view things today and how if we choose to live by this word that we're criticized and we're demonized. We're surrounded by darkness, but we've been called to be the light. We've been called to be the light. You know, and that's why it excites me so much when I see you show up on Sunday evenings because you have made up your mind that you ch have chosen to be a light in a dark world. But can I tell you something? Darkness cannot exist in the presence of the light. Ever. Ever. Darkness cannot exist in the presence of a light. I can turn off every light in this church and light a candle, and every one of you will be drawn to that candle because it's a light. And it will light up in here, and you will be able to see And darkness will never overtake that light. Ever will it ever overtake that light. People will always notice where there's light. 
People will always be drawn. I don't care how dark the world is. When they see the light, they will always be drawn to it. Tonight, I want to challenge you as a church and myself. We need to become a light to this generation, and we need to be a focused light. What happens when you focus light? Anybody know? It gets bright, and it gets hot, and it starts a fire. I remember one day when I was working out of town, I used to work, and I did some work on a big solar field out south of Las Vegas. I was out there for about seven months, and we had these big old solar mirrors out there, and I was out, and we'd go out there every morning before the sun came up. How many ever been out in the desert at night? Now, it's dark. It is dark out there in the desert. And I was sitting there one morning, and I was working on uh, wiring up a, a control panel there on one of those uh, solar mirrors and these big old concave mirrors. And, and uh, the sun started coming up. And I just watched the sunrise, and I thought, how beautiful this sunrise is. It's so beautiful, and it was a little cool that morning, and I had my coveralls on, and I was trying to stay warm, and, and I was just sitting there, and I was working away, and all of a sudden, as the sun began to rise, I was like, what in the world is on fire? I smell something burning. Then all of a sudden, I could see smoke, and I'm like, there's something burning around here. I'm out in the middle of the desert. What is on fire? And I looked around, and it was me. <laughs> I had sat just in the right spot that when the sun hit that mirror, it focused the light, and there was, a, there was a strip, a white strip across the ground about that wide of just white light. And it was so hot, it caught my coveralls on fire. And I was sitting in it. But that focused light, when it was focused, it shone so brightly. And when it shone so brightly, it generated such a heat that it caught something on fire, and that was me. You know what? I want the light of Jesus to shine so brightly on me that it sparks a fire and lights me a fire so I can light somebody else on fire. How about that? Amen? Amen? Let's walk in that focused light of Jesus Christ so we can light this world on fire. I know this is not a deep message tonight, but I want so much to spark a fire in Ardmore, Oklahoma, and in Crystal Rock Cathedral. I want to make a difference in a world surrounded by so much darkness. I want to be a light. I want to be a focused light. And that everything that I set my heart, my mind to, builds the kingdom of God. See, I'm not up here just as a pretty face. Y'all can laugh. Casey, that was too loud. I'm not up here just to be a pretty face. I'm not up here just to waste your time or just to hear myself talk. I'm up here because I'm a part of you and you're a part of me and together we can light this world on fire. Tonight, let's live our lives with purpose and focus and pray for the direction and opportunity that God could give us to make a difference. I want so much to make a difference. But I said this in one of my messages not too far back. I can't make a difference unless I put him first. Unless I put him first. Unless you put him first. See, because without him being first, you have no focus. See, that's the thing. 
Like I said earlier, we come in here and sometimes we walk around with our head in the clouds and we come in here and say, now, I'm going to church to get mine tonight. I'm going to rub the God genie bottle and I'm going to get what I need. And our focus isn't on him, it's on us. We come in here and we focus about our problems. And I'm not trying to be rude, so please, but I'm going to tell you what the Holy Spirit told me this week. Shut up. Shut up. Start concentrating on God. Turn your eyes toward him. Turn your needs in your, in, to his direction. He knows what you need. You know what he told me this week? I'm tired of hearing you complain about it, Jamie. I'm tired of hearing you gripe and complain. I, hear, I heard it last week, and I heard it the week before. Won't you pray about it? Just pray about it. Get focused on me. Because when you focus on me, I can change the situation. But you've got a hold of it. You have to let it go. But you know what? We're walking around in this dark world, in this dark generation. And we're always waiting for somebody else to solve the problem. Can I tell you something? God has called you. God has called you to help solve this situation. He's called you to focus in on him. Focus in on the light. People will be drawn to the light. Can I tell you something? Billy Graham's not here anymore. He ministered to thousands upon thousands upon thousands and tens of thousands. And he'd done what God had called him to do. But he's received his reward. Now it's up to you. We want to be a light in a dark world. Yet we don't want any consequences for having to stand for what is right. I want to be like Daniel. Thank you so much for watching this video. And I want to do this for you today. I want you to join me and just say the, the prayer of the sinner. And I hope that you will let, let Jesus Christ come into your heart and change your life. God's got a good plan for your life. All you need to do is invite him in. And the Bible said he'll come in and live inside of you. So pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I recognize that I am a sinner, that God loves me, and that God wants to save me. So I repent of my sins. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and has come to save me. I accept him right now as my Savior and my Lord in Jesus' name. And I thank you, God, for saving my life. Amen. God bless you, my friend. And may the Lord bless you and keep you always in his love. His power in the name of Jesus.